been getting a lot of questions about this 3D printed veneer case, so I want to dive into it with you guys. Here we have Abby. Abby has been in ortho for over 10 years. Paddle expanders, moving cuspids into lateral positions, and all sorts of crazy things. Um, probably trying to correct a skeletal issue with tooth movement and full-blown braces. Not the best of ideas, but here we have her smile and we could see some things are going on. One thing that I would like to point out is that we have some midline cant here, roughly five degrees. Midline is shifted over to the patient's left. We have a two size discrepancy here with a cuspid in site number seven and a primary retained tooth G in site number 10. And of course, size discrepancies there. And we have premolars moved into cuspid position. So we have a lot to correct with veneers. This is not a no prep veneer case because we're having to do so much. And I take tooth reduction very seriously. I never want to reduce tooth unless I absolutely have to. Patient is just not interested in going back into ortho and you can understand why after all those years. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna prepare that cuspid that is now in site number 10. And I'm gonna go ahead and break contact on the mesial because I am going to shift that cuspid over just about, oh, about a half a millimeter to a millimeter or so without compromising the integrity of that tooth. So I wanna to try to avoid going into dentin with my preparation. I am gonna prep eight and nine for the purposes of uprighting the midline and moving the midline, so I need to break contact on eight and nine. Everything else is in enamel with minimum reduction. And on the primary retained tooth G, I am just removing all the old resin materials that was on that tooth, cleaning up any decay and making sure that the prep draws and breaking contact both mesial and distally and reducing the distal of nine so that I could try to widen that primary tooth G, make it look a little bit more like a permanent tooth. So this is kind of what we're at here. We're, we're always compromising between reduction, uh, keeping an enamel and tooth movement. Doing a little intraoral scan here with an experimental scanner, one of um, 10 different scanners that I'm testing right now. Companies like to have me test all sorts of scanners. And here we are now throwing all this data into ExoCAD. And in ExoCAD, we can see um, we were able to do a little bit of what we wanted to accomplish um, and give the illusion by moving line angles and uprighting midline. So on this cuspid on, that is in site number um, seven, we were able to kind of move that mesial line angle over given the reduction of the tooth. And, and in the midline, if we turn on the pre-op, we can see the canted midline. Um, and look at, we have no reduction on the facial of eight and nine. We have the, the preps sticking through the pre-op. It's coincident with the pre-op. So barely any reduction there, which is what I wanted, keeping all that in enamel. And, and so from here, we're gonna put this into Smile Creator and you can see where we need to move things. We need to upright the midline, move it over roughly about a millimeter or a half a millimeter. We need to um, give the illusion that that cuspid in sight number seven is a lateral and the primary retained tooth G, we need to try to make it look like a permanent lateral. And here we have her 3D face scan in ExoCAD with her pre-op model fused to the face scan, melting that back and turning on my digital wax up. And we could see we've accomplished, at least from the smile standpoint, some of the things that we set out using the 165-50 proportion gauge. We've uprighted the midline. It is still just a little bit off to the patient's left, but um, the degree of acceptability there is quite high with three millimeters of a midline shift not being very noticeable, but a cant is unacceptable. So we corrected that midline cant. Now we're off to finishing the prints. And so off the printer here, we are gonna use this felt pad to go ahead and smooth and actually further thin them out because you have to print them at about 300 microns. We could thin them and here I'm adding some texture with a coarse diamond infusing liquid resin on top of that surface. This is the candy coating technique um, that we discussed at Mod using native resins and Empress Direct stains interdiffused into those native resins. And the goal here is not to use any um, glazes or anything that would be on the surface that would chip or peel off over time. This is um, unadulterated liquid resin here that is the biocompatible resin that we printed with. And we're gonna go ahead and interdiffuse some colors and some tints into this. Um, here we're using some translucency color. Um, Ivoclar's resin colors are some of the best on the market. They have the perfect consistency. And we're gonna go ahead now and create a little halo here, just on the very edge. And now um, from here, we're just gonna make sure that we have an equal coating of liquid resin everywhere. And 
to add surface texture back into this coating, what we like to use is a sharp instrument here, like this hummingbird beak or a brooch, and we're gonna add lines. So here we're gonna go really quick and then freeze that with the light. So here we can see we have horizontal and vertical lines. And so we went ahead and put these in on the same day that she came in and you could see the final result. She's so happy with her new smile and these are just printed veneers. All eight of those veneers were printed in about 20 minutes and delivered in all in the same three hour appointment. Absolutely incredible guys. I hope you guys enjoy the power of 3D printing in your offices. And again, reach out if you have any questions. I'd love to help you with your printing journey.